Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Together, Jake and his friends interview talents varying from actors, directors, writers, producers, composers, puppeteers, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I am one of your co-hosts, Chris Bixby, and with us today are our other co-hosts, Wyatt McCullough, Matthew Johnson, and Matt Bingle, and our host, Jake Deffenbaugh. How are you guys? Really good. good. How about you, Chris? And good. How are you doing? Very How are good. You? And w- very good. And we also have a guest co-host, one of our good friends, Tyler Armstrong. Tyler, hello, Howard. hello, hello. It's great. To, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm Tyler. You probably know me from the Wiggles Enthusiast podcast, testing one, two, three. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty appropriate that I'm on today's episode. Yeah. yeah. They also know you from Phillips' episode because you were mentioned. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. I was mentioned in Phillips' episode. Yeah. Yes, we mm-hmm. love talking to him. Yes. Anyway, oh man, today, Chris. So excited. So <laughs> yes. today's interview. He is a musician who. I'm sure most of you watching will mostly know him from his time as the original Red Wiggle in The Wiggles. He is now currently uh, working with the Australian band The Soul Movers, and here he is. He is Murray Cook. Murray, how are you? Woo! Woo! G'day, guys. How are you? Great. 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 We're, We're so great. good. We're, We're so very excited. good. <laughs> so awesome to have you. Yes. So to start this off, so for those who don't know who you are, we know who you are, but for those who don't, can you tell a little bit about yourself and what you do? Uh, yes, well, um, I'm, as you said, I'm mostly known for being the original Red Wiggle. And uh, yep. you know, if people don't know about the Wiggles, um, <clears throat> we're a, a group of guys who, who make um, music for children. Um, we started in 1991 mm-hmm. and um, put out our first, uh, well, it was it was a cassette, actually, not, not I was going to say CD, but our first uh album of music and it just sort of went from there and we started touring around Australia. We, we started in Australia um, and uh, it just got bigger and bigger. And, um, uh, we, you know, we started off really small. My, my buddies who I, uh, who I was started the Wiggles with Anthony and Jeff and Greg um, and I would just get into a, a van and we had a trailer on the back, which, um, you know, costumes and instruments. And we'd just go out into the uh, Australian, um, out back and uh, stop at little towns and and um, then we just toured constantly until people sort of got to know about us and uh, then uh, towards the end it, uh, yeah so as it got bigger um, you know we we toured more and went a bit further afield uh, to New Zealand Hong Kong and then in the late or early two uh, thousands uh, we decided to try our luck in America and um, uh, definitely worked out. Signed, yeah. Here we are. Yeah, well, yeah dude, here great. we are. But you know, when we, we every every step of the way, really, we just did it as, as an adventure. We didn't really um, have world domination yeah. in our minds. That's for sure. You know, when we first started, there were there really weren't one, there wasn't anyone doing what we do. There were a lot of um, different acts for children, but they were generally solo performers. And um, so we kind of did change the landscape quite a bit. So, um, and going to America was no different. We just, we just did it as an adventure. We wanted to, um, uh, you know, just get out there and, and play our music and yeah. uh, see what happened. But we were fortunate enough to be spotted by um, a company called Lyric Entertainment who yeah. put out the Barney. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. They put out the Barney videos <clears throat> and, um, uh, and we signed with them and they, they got us to come over a few times. We used to do... Um, Barney had a touring live show, and we used to play four mm-hmm. songs. Yeah, and, um, we're just playing musical, musical castle. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's it. And so that was great fun for us because we had we got out there and played our music, but just you know for ten minutes or so. Yeah, and then, uh, we had most yeah. of the rest of the time off, so you know we got to to really spend some uh, great time in the US. And then um, Lyric managed to get us uh, on um, on the Disney Channel. And, um, yeah, and that was, oh, yes. that, that's really what turned it around for us. Um, yeah, you know, because um, so Disney, yeah, Playhouse Disney um, would play our show, um, you know, like five times a day or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and so yeah. it just went, really went through the roof then. And you know, we so we did bigger tours and we were playing arenas and um, uh, you know we did Madison Square Garden and we did um, yeah. you know all these amazing things. We did the Macy's um, Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, three times and oh, wow. you know, looking back now 
it, uh, <laughs> it seems like another like a dream, really. But uh, it was just great. We had great fun. We saw a lot of America. We uh, played in nearly every state, I think. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it, it was a great time. Uh, then towards uh, in 20, well, part of the way through, Greg, um, our singer, got um, had a, a mystery illness, really, that was eventually diagnosed, but he had to leave for health reasons. So Sam oh, yeah. came in and then, so we kept going for a while. And, and um, then around 2012, uh, Jeff and I were um, sort of thinking we'd, we might uh, move on um, for various reasons. Je- Jeff for, had some health issues at the time, which sort of resolved now. Um, and uh, I, just, I had teenage children who, we're getting towards the end of school and I just wanted to spend some more time with them. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, touring constantly like we did, it's very, you know, very tiring. I was getting a bit older yeah, too. So, I can imagine. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it was a difficult decision, but um, uh, so we decided to, to uh, three of us decided to leave. Well, Greg, Greg came back for the last year um, and because uh, he never really got a chance to say goodbye to the fans. So that was really nice. We got to do a, um, a, a year's touring before we, um, yeah. signed off and, and um mm-hmm. fortunately um so we haven't new line up of the wiggles and um it took a little while but they built up and they're very popular here in australia and canada and new zealand um and so that's been that's been really great for us to, to see that that going on um so yeah when i <clears throat> when i left with the wiggles i'm still involved with the wiggles behind the yeah. scenes a little, mm-hmm. a little bit because it's still our company but um then i <clears throat> um Oh, I did quite a few things. I played with a few different bands, just little bands around Sydney. And um, and then I met um, Lizzie, who's the singer in the Soul Movers. And um, she'd already had a lineup of the Soul Movers going that had broken up. And uh, so I suggested we get it back together and get out there on the road. And um, not like the Wiggles tour, but we get out and about and get around Australia. And and, um, uh, and we've we've written a whole bunch of songs and we've got uh, three albums out. Um, uh, yeah, and it's great. It's a it's a great outlet for me. I've got that sort of creative outlet because I was a bit lost after sure. the Wiggles after yeah. I finished the Wiggles. Yeah, so yeah. You know, when you when when you've done something, it's kind of life defined. Yeah, is that it's hard to move on and, and um, But you know, this has been really great. And I really enjoyed it. And then in the last few years, we've been doing the occasional um, uh, shows with the original Wiggles for for yeah, yeah. Fans yeah. yeah. Like, like you guys, you know. Um, yeah. And that's been that's been amazing. We we started off just doing it in a few little clubs in Australia, right. um, so you know probably five six hundred people, um, and then uh, this year, uh, well, it was actually planned for last year for the thirtieth um, anniversary of the Wiggles. Um, we were planning to do. Well, then COVID big became a yeah, big scary COVID thing in Australia exactly, again. Yeah, yeah. So we had yeah. a lot of lockdowns. Kind of put a lot of things done. on halt for a bit. I did, yeah. Lots, of, lots of different tours for lots of people, and you know, yeah. just like, yeah, it, it, the entertainment industry was was rocked pretty hard, especially the live music in, industry. So, um, so that was pretty tough. So, so we put it um, back to this year, and, and um, uh, yeah, so we did that earlier around April, I think. We did it over a couple of months. We we uh, yeah. took it pretty easy, just two or three shows a month, and uh, yeah. and it was great. We had uh, in Sydney and Melbourne, we had. Um, like fifteen thousand people at each show, and, and uh, wow. it, it, really, it went nuts. It was it really went off. And there was just joy in the room, which is what I've always said. The Wiggles is about just spreading joy, and um, it, yeah. it really was. And uh, yeah, other people were saying it too. The the, uh, the guy who runs the arena in Melbourne said he's never seen experienced such joy in in a show. So that you know, it was great, and it was great to be back with the guys. You know, I, um, I see Jeff and Greg, uh, Jeff and Anthony a bit, but um, I don't see Greg a lot. So whenever we get together, it's just like um, old you know, times. A bunch of brothers. Yeah, it's just old times. Yeah, yeah. That so tour we, you know, was we awesome. spent so much time together. Oh man. Yeah, that tour was awesome. It's yes, I've seen so I've seen so many clips of it on YouTube. It's absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, it was great. It was great fun, and, and you know, people came dressed up in their wiggles th- things. You know, like Dorothy the dinosaur hats just yeah. perched yeah. on their head. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Of course, they don't fit anymore. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and that's such an awesome tour. I'm actually Instagram buddies with Anthony, so believe it or not, I actually he asked me to contribute to the set list a little bit. So oh, okay, I, I think cool. I, I contributed. I think "Dancing in the Sand" was probably the biggest one, and oh, uh, right, right, yeah. and uh, here comes a bear. I think got in as well. So, oh, cool. wow. Yeah, well, "Dancing in the Sand" is one that um, 
I'd kind of forgotten about it. And so when, when it was suggested we do it, it was like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. So, a so good well one. done, Tyler. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Good job, Thank man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when did you first get into playing guitar and what are your earliest musical memories? Um, I'm, I'm um, 62 years old, so uh, I started yeah. playing in the early 70s. Um, yeah. Uh, so I was, mm-hmm. I was about 11, I think. And <clears throat> but my, my earliest mu- musical memories um, uh, were just hearing stuff on the radio. So, you know, like when I was a kid, the yeah. Beatles were still around. And, um, so, you know, I heard that on the radio. But I, I didn't take a lot of notice of it. But then, um, kids, I grew up in a country town. And so we had a lot of freedom. We used to sort of just run around the place. And, and um, so we were either, it seemed like we spent all our time either outside playing or watching television. <laughs> and so... Um, this show that the monkeys. I don't know if you, do you know the monkeys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the monkeys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they were they were actually formed for a television show, and oh, wow. so the TV show came on on in Australia, and, and I just loved it. It was it was great fun, but it was oh, also um, you know music and and yeah, you know, they played guitars, and I thought from that the guitars were just such so cool, the coolest thing ever. And of course, I still think that, but um. Uh, yeah, so I, I really loved that and I yeah, loved the songs. I loved that there were four guys that all lived together in one house and it was kind of really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was probably, mm-hmm. I was probably about eight, eight, eight years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and then then I started being a bit more aware of the music on the radio and I realised that The Monkeys was kind of a bit of a take-off of, um, of The Beatles. Um, it was kind of based on that. So I really yeah. got into yeah. The Beatles then and, and, and I still am a huge Beatles fan of yeah, nice. same, same here. Same here. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it that was great. So I remember, I remember the Beatles albums coming out, and I, and I had a, a really good friend in primary school whose brother had a whole lot of records. So we used to go to his place and listen to them, and listen to Beatles records, and uh, yeah. And then you know, from there, um, like in the seventies, David Bowie, um, yeah, uh, oh, yes. Zeppelin, oh yeah, the people yeah. went through all the hard rock stuff for a while, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then the, uh, the Clash and Elvis Costello and a lot of those bands. Mm, were yeah, the Clash. Yeah. So, you know, oh, yeah. I always, I always love, I always love guitar music because of my, that's my thing. Of course, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. any, any definitely. good guitar music. Yeah, so um, yeah, and the, yeah, that was my earliest. Yeah, so um, yeah, once I got sort of in, really into music and really um, uh, enjoying it, and and um, I. Uh, I just pestered my parents to get it to buy me a guitar. Um, no, no one else in my family played an instrument or was that really that into music, but I just became obsessed with it. And um, there you go. So uh, yeah, so they we um, went to the local music store, and um, I had a a guy who was going to teach me, and he came along and helped me pick out a guitar, and it was a really nice one, uh, uh, an Australian brand called Maiton. And uh, if you follow. The Wiggles closely probably know mm-hmm. that we've played Maiden guitar. Yeah. So oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, but my my first one was a yeah, nylon string nylon string acoustic guitar, like a classical guitar, and it was some. It cost eighty dollars, which was a oh, lot wow. of money in nineteen seventy one. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and so I just played, had lessons, um, and then just you know, sat in my room a lot and played guitar, and, and uh, yeah, just just really became obsessed with it. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That is that's awesome. awesome. So who would you say are some of your biggest musical influences? Yeah, like, of course, I know you mentioned the Monkees and the Beatles. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, they, they, they're some of the biggest. Um, a lot a lot of music, a lot of different stuff. You know, I, I like um, j- jazz, mostly 50s jazz. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but, like, yeah, Miles Davis and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, guitar bands, especially the 60s bands, the Stones, the Who, the Birds. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Dylan. Um, yeah, so a lot of that stuff. A lot of soul music. I mean, in the soul movies, we do play some soul music. It, it sounds like we are just a soul band, but um, we play a, like, a, quite a range of stuff. So I like a lot of soul music too. Aretha Franklin, Otis Reading. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that whole Atlantic thing. So, um, yeah, mostly older stuff because I'm an older guy. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sort of, all uh, these are goodies. Uh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah, all these are goodies. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. And um, but you know, I still sort of 
followed a little bit here with the guitar music. I mean, guitar rock isn't as sort of um, all-encompassing as it used to be. It used to be like the main form of music that people were into, but, you know, there's so much um, diversity now. But, uh, you know, in Australia, we, we, uh, with the Soul Movers, I just played a festival a few weeks ago called Splendour in the Grass. Although everyone was calling it Splendour in the Mud because it, <laughs> it rained and there was lots of mud. But um, look, there are lots of bands there, Australian sort of young uh, bands that uh, I, I really dig. And, I, and the thing is, too, now in Australia, because we've been around for so long, you know, a lot of these bands, you know, I, I know the people in them. So a lot of the bands I used to go and see when I was a teenager, I kind of know those guys now, which is yeah. kind of... <laughs> Surreal, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome, yeah, yeah, that's right it. on. So, uh, you mentioned some of your favorite artists, but what would you say growing up, some of your favorite albums, and even now? Um, uh, well, things like, um, well, kind of any Beatles album, but I mean, I love Revolver and I love oh, yeah. Rubber Soul, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. oh, yeah, uh, I love. Bowie, so you know, Ziggy Stardust and um, Hunky Dory and, and Lowe, one of the later ones. Um, what else? I'm always really bad at saying what my favourite things are because I like so many oh, things. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Oh, that's yeah. completely that's fine. Yeah. Definitely a lot so to choose was, from. Yeah, there are lots to choose from. I mean, I've got, I've got um, a bunch of... Uh, Whoa! Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, man. I still got a lot of wow. vinyl. I still Huge. got CDs, and so um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That's crazy. It, it puts my shelf to shame. It's over there. <laughs> yeah, really oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had a bit longer to collect stuff than you have. True. Don't give me excuses. It just means I gotta catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been buying records for fifty years, so <laughs> ah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now you know, before the Wiggles, you definitely had a previous experience with children, um, you know, working with a early childhood development for Macquarie University. Could you talk a little bit about your decision to kind of uh, enroll in Macquarie University? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the Wiggles really came out of that course because um, we that's where we, we all met, um, well, except for Jeff, who Anthony already knew. But um, just going back a bit, when I first left school, because um, uh, I, I was actually 28 when I went to university, so... Um, to do the early childhood. So I'd already done quite a few other things. Um, and when I first left school, I, I, I did go to university briefly, just started a um, sort of English lit degree, but I didn't really like it and dropped out. I always wanted to play music, but, you know, so I played in bands um, through the 80s, through my 20s. And, um, uh, but not, you know, we, at the time in, in Sydney, particularly Sydney and Melbourne, where there were a lot of places to play, so... You know, even if you weren't that great and you were just starting out, you could get gigs. And so we played a lot and got better. And um, they had a little bit of a following, but never really got sort of um, that big. Uh, and I, I, I worked day jobs at the same time. And um, so I kind of went, oh, I don't think I'm going to be, you know, music's not going to be my career. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. so I thought, well, what else would I want to do? And I, I thought, I just always thought I'd probably end up teaching. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I looked. I looked into it. I was um, related to, to young kids. You know, I really like um, uh, the way they think and the you know the way they behave. And, and um, yeah. And so mm -hmm. I was looking at probably at first. I was looking at doing like primary. We call it primary school. I think it's elementary school there. But yeah. um, I looked. I looked into this course um, of early childhood where you sort of trained to be a preschool teacher or a teacher in childcare, but you can also teach elementary school. So. I, I thought, well, that's fairly flexible. Also, there's a lot of music and the arts involved, um, which I really liked. And um, uh, and so, yeah, I, I enrolled. And it's it's a funny thing. Well, and I guess it's the same everywhere in the world, but it, it's the sort of co course that mainly um, girls do. So um, yeah, we had a small campus and it was probably um, five 500 students altogether and there were five of us were guys. So we were... We were quite outnumbered. So when Anthony came along, you know, we kind of gravitated together. I knew who he was already because Anthony was in um, a band called The Cockroaches in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. So they had, some big, they had some big hits. And um, so I knew who he was. And, you know, we kind of hit it off because we had 
a lot of similar experiences. We knew a lot of the same people in the music sort of scene. So, um, yeah, and um, so we finished the course and we, we'd played music together quite a lot. Um, and Greg, Greg came along a couple of years later. He was a couple of years behind us because he's a fair bit younger. So Anthony and I were both older guys yeah. there and um, Greg was, um, yeah, just still a teenager, I think. And um, and then it, so at the end of that, when you, when you study early childhood um, education, it, a lot of it's about the way children think more so yeah. than mm -hmm. like learning a curriculum to teach. So you base your curriculum on, on um, you know, it's sort of child psychology, child development, they call it. And um, so we knew a lot about the way kids think. We knew a lot about playing music with children, um, about communicating with young children. And so we mm -hmm. decided we'd put all that together. It was kind of Anthony's idea to do just a one-off album. Yeah. And um, we didn't think it was going to be an ongoing thing. Um, and so we, um, yeah, so after we, Anthony and I had both finished, we were teaching. Uh, Greg was still at, at university and um, we started um, we recorded the first album. We start, as I said before, we started playing it. With, uh, uh, we just used to do little shows in preschools and, and yeah. you know, kids' birthday parties and stuff like that. Um, and it was just for fun. We just did it because it was fun and we loved doing it. And uh, mm -hmm. then it got more and more popular. And so we decided to leave teaching at, at first just temporarily. We, we thought, let's give it a year and see how it goes. Um, and... Well, it went pretty well, so we didn't ever really go back. To <laughs> right, yeah. But yeah, I, I taught in preschool and I taught at Macquarie University, taught uh, uh, teaching at adults as well. So, um, so that was a pretty good job, which I probably would have stayed in had the Wiggles not taken off. But um, yeah, pretty happy with the way it turned out. Nice. <laughs> yeah, as, no, as you should be. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. So you mentioned Anthony and Greg. How did you meet Jeff and Philip? Uh, well, Philip worked. Uh, I don't know. Philip was the, the fifth Wiggle who just appeared yeah. in the first album. Yeah, and moved on. Mm -hmm. yeah he was um, one of our previous guests, too. Yeah, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, he worked. Deep round hours. In the music department, but, you know, a great. Um, yeah. Artist and, and like, particularly classical pianist, that was his kind of thing. And he composes now as well. Oh, he did then, too. Um, uh, uh, and Jeff was in the Cockroaches. So um, we, we just. Anthony wanted him to come and play on some stuff. And so he, he doesn't have any background in early childhood, uh, before the Wiggles anyway. Now he has obviously yeah. quite a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but then Anthony phoned him and said, oh, can you come and, um, come and play you know, keyboards on this thing we're recording for kids? And, and Jeff said, oh, how long, how long will, it, will it take? And uh, um, Anthony said, oh, just a few hours. Well, you know. 30 years later. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. That was. Yeah, so that's how we met them. And um, yeah, Philip decided to move on. Yeah. Sort of just after yeah. the first uh, album. It was a bit, it wasn't exactly his thing. And, um, uh, you know, that, those things happened. I mean, for us now, that's so yeah, so long ago. And um, yeah. 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 Like it's, you know, it's like 30 mm -hmm. years ago. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so you had brought up uh, the, the you had brought up the debut album. Uh, what was it like recording that? Um, oh, it was an, it was a good experience. It was um, uh, and we were just sort of putting things together. It was a lot of experimenting, you know, coming up with different ideas and and um, which is sort of how we continued, I guess. Um, wow, that's that's a long time ago. It was, <laughs> um, I think. Uh, Anthony had a bit of money from, he was still playing in the cockroaches a bit. They were still playing a, a bit. So he, he kind of still had a bit of money. So he sort of paid for the recording uh, from memory. And then, uh, yeah, we'd just go in, a, you know, doing anything new, even with people you know quite well. It, it's kind of trial and error and you're sort of feeling your way a bit. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, it, it went well. It was a good experience. Yeah. Definitely. There you go. Yeah. It was a hit. So, yeah. Um, on on Wiggles albums, now I, I kind of study this type of stuff. I'm kind of a nerd. So uh, on Wiggles <laughs> albums, it's not super well known, but you didn't play nearly as much guitar as you did bass. So uh, when did you first pick up playing bass? Was that like around the same time you were learning guitar, or? Uh, no, it was you know, a bit later. I played a bit of bass in my late teens, and then um, one of my bands in the that I played with in the '80s called Finger Guns. Um, 
I'd played, been playing with a friend of mine, a school friend, Mark, and um, I, I played guitar in the earlier versions of the band, and we just had a lot of trouble finding a bass player, so I decided to to, to do it. So, um, so yeah. I guess I played it fairly seriously since my mid twenties. So, um, yeah. So when when we recorded, um, started recording the albums, um, yeah, I, I nearly always played wow. bass. Sometimes, yeah. Anthony played guitar, and I'd play some guitar, and then we'd get some other. We, we had a guy called Terry Murray who used to come. Oh, in. Yeah. oh yes, he was he was guitar amazing. God. Was guitar amazing. God, um, <laughs> oh, another yeah, another yeah. insanely talented guitarist. Yeah, yes. so we oh, yeah. we'd get him in. We oh, get yeah. him in to do all the really uh, tricky bits. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. He, he played some crazy well, I think stuff. I, probably, I think I probably played more and more guitar as, as time went on, just because uh, the way we recorded. And once we got our own studio. You know, oh, yeah. I quite often yeah. just sit in there and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, def- definitely. Do you do you have a favorite song you've written for the Wiggles from over the years or performed? Really? Um, there's one I'm I'm pretty proud of because I, I love it when it rains. Yes. Yes. That yeah, song. yeah, That's pretty song. Love that song. Um, yeah, and and we we've, we've been playing that in the OG Wiggles. Yeah, so I, probably, oh, yeah. I hadn't forgotten about it, but I, you know, it's just been really nice playing it lately. And you know, it's it's mm-hmm. one of those ones where I don't really know where it came from. You know, just the melody just sure. came into my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then you know, there's just like we we were pretty collaborative, and um, sometimes you forget with a lot of those sort of songs, you you forget what your contribution was. You know, when <laughs> yeah. you're writing lots <laughs> of songs, and you know, sometimes. So we always credited all the songs to the four of us, or nearly always, after yeah. a couple of albums. Yeah, and, um, right. and so, you know, sometimes you'd be credited on something you weren't there with, but or sometimes one of us would write the whole song and we'd credit all of them. So we weren't too concerned about that part of it. But um, So I'm, I'm just really proud of you know, there you go. a lot of those songs, you know, um, yeah. Fruit Salad. And, yes. Um, oh, yeah. Play, Playing guitar with Murray was yes. yes. Oh yes. Um, and that was kind of a bit of a joke when we first did it. It's, it's a very long story. So, but um, it, it was kind of a little bit of a joke. And then, um, and we had like a silly verse that we got rid of. But um, really, uh, oh, oh wow, yeah. oh wow, yeah. that, yeah, that's, that just, is yeah, new information. We're just mucking around. <laughs> yeah, we're mucking around. We're mucking around, and, and um, we just kind of, you know. When something like when Murray was a boy, his his mother did say he'll pl- play rock and roll guitar one day or something like that. <laughs> it was that just, is uh, insane! Wow, crazy. That, wow, yeah. Yeah, that and is then crazy. We, we kind of went. Well, we didn't like that bit, but we liked the um, play guitar with Murray, and, and so we just wrote, wrote the rest of the song around that. Let's all play <laughs> and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's all play. Well, and yeah, and now it's one of the most well-known original Wiggle songs. I, I know. Think. It's classic. <laughs> you guys it's played it out like, like during its time. You played it in like nearly all of your shows for I, I a couple the, of years. I love the love the fact that you guys brought back Anthony, like trying to put up the balloon. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's you know it's good to do all those things that like have a few nods to things we used to do. You know, um, in shows. People like yeah. the people who come along. It's it really is about nostalgia and and. Yeah. Um, and reliving their youth, so it's really great yeah. if they see those things. And, you yeah. know, some of them might have forgotten it; they might have seen it at the shows. And go, oh, yeah, that's right, that was great. So, yeah, no, yeah, that was great. it's just fun to do. Yeah. We, saw, we like, you know. I saw you on two tours where you did that. Here's a actually, I got a picture. Yeah, Tyler has a photo. This Look is this. This, this is you and I in uh, Chicago oh, yeah. two, in 2006. <laughs> Oh, wow! wow. That. wow. <laughs> hey, you're both a lot younger there, Tyler. You don't have yeah. to. Rem- <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't. Yes. Fair enough. You don't have to remember it, but you know, that's, that's that's a yeah. It's it's pretty cool because uh, the Wiggles music has been such an inspiration. I actually have my own band now, and we're playing in Chicago this weekend. So there you that's go. Yeah. Cool. So nice. that's great, man. I I, I love hearing um, hearing uh, stories of people who now play music in bands who um who grew, who grew up with the Wiggles. It's it's because one of the things we really hoped would happen is that uh, we'd inspire people to play music and um, well, or just to love it yeah, you know you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to play it but but just to love it but um yeah it's really great i you know i do meet people young people in bands who um tell me that they 
you know, the Wiggles was their first show and, and that's why they got into guitar or whatever yeah. instrument. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm coming at you from my like home studio right now. And if it wasn't, yeah, like, if, 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 if it wasn't, studio. if it wasn't for me seeing the Wiggles all those years ago, I might not be coming from, for you from a studio at all. So. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's good. Good to hear. Yes. So, so what's since your, what's your band called, Tyler? My band is called Scorched Waves. We're like an indie rock kind of band, kind of like the Strokes, Arctic cool. Monkeys, that type oh, yeah. of stuff. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. One one thing I am you know curious about. So obviously you you mentioned like kind of later on. So obviously as you guys continued to progress, the tours grew bigger audiences, and the Wiggles overall sound changed progressively and. You brought in uh, musicians like one of Anthony's brothers, John Field, uh, Terry Murray, which you mentioned, uh, Dominic Lindsay, Steve Blau. Uh, what are some of your fondest memories from working with them? Uh, well, they're they're all great musicians, and yeah. um, you know, and and uh, John Anthony's brother, John, um, was particularly involved in um, uh, writing. He's a, he's a great songwriter, so he wrote yeah. he wrote most of the Cockroaches. Hits and um, oh wow, and yep. I, I, nice. I've known John for a long time too. Because when um yeah. when we were still at university, um, we used to go um, busking, you know, playing in the street. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that yeah I know what that um, is. So um, we used to make a bit of extra money. So it was actually the the four Wiggles before we were the the Wiggles and um and and John Field and um mm. we used to that's go, awesome. F that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. We used to play. There's an area in Sydney called um, Circular Quay, which is is where the ferries come in at the, in the harbour, and um, uh, so you'd get fer we'd set up there and you'd get the ferries come in and everyone would get off, and so we'd be playing as they came out and they'd all stay and it was you know it was lots of fun we we're pretty nutty and yeah. um, uh, um, so I knew John from that when obviously through Anthony so so yeah it was great that when he got involved in the um, recording and writing and stuff so. Um, yeah, we always like to play with different people because it, it kind of keeps it fresh and different yeah. ideas mm -hmm. come in. And um, Dom, Dom Lindsay in particular has been, yes. um, and yeah. he's been very involved recently too. Um, he's sort of come um, come back, or he didn't really go anywhere, but we've, he's been you know, no. working a lot with Anthony lately on the new Wiggles stuff. And yeah. he's mm -hmm. been on the tours as well. He didn't come to New Zealand, but he was on the um, OG Wiggles uh, tour playing trumpet and some key. Keith that sounded, also, sounded yeah, awesome with him there. Oh man, yeah, yeah he's he's really great, and he's also, you know, back in the day when we used to quite often have strings and stuff on the on the records, he he um, arranged those, and um, a lot of the genius. time it was his sisters. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time it was his sisters actually playing it because they're, they're all they're well, his whole family of musicians. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, and Terry Murray was always great. We we met Terry really early on, and um got him to play on stuff and he's a real character he'd always have you know new jokes when he turned up so <laughs> he was always a good vibe man as well so yeah it was there you go yeah. good time. Awesome. oh yeah that's awesome speaking of don Lindsay, tyler had him on his podcast i it did have don Lindsay on my podcast oh, yeah. that was, a, that was very awesome really... very 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 fun interview he's super oh, cool. cool yeah he's a good nice. guy yeah yes yeah. oh yeah yeah, so um, since you mentioned, uh, of course, Dom Lindsay's been involved a lot recently. Have you, um, I, of course, I know you did the Rewiggled album, the Rewiggled mm -hmm. album, which I think is amazing. Oh, yes. Um, I love I, it. I mean, as for that, is there any uh, recent uh, like recording projects you've done with the uh, Wiggles? Uh, only, only the Rewiggled stuff. That, um, yeah, so I played on a few of the songs there. Um, uh, yeah, not a lot because I've done. Um, Anthony's kind of in the studio all the time when they're not on the road, and so he mm -hmm. he just kind of asked me to come in and do some stuff when when he wants to use me for something. So yeah, yeah. so I, mm -hmm. I I did I played the solo on um well, I played all the the guitar on Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, that was the, the so oh yes, and, uh, yes. that was good fun. But it took me about three days to learn the guitar solo. <laughs> oh, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty complicated. It's a great solo though. I mean, it's amazing. It was great fun to yeah. play. And then, oh, yeah. and then I played on Pub Feed, which I learned. And yeah, it's um, great song. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's man. a good Pub Feed. Yeah. 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 Chats. Well, those, good, those guys, I know those guys, the chats who, who wrote that song, and they've been pretty nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you like, if you like punk rock, they're pretty good. I, I, but, um, I, I yeah, but that, the one I, that one I oh, learned really? in the. I learned in the studio just and recorded it straight away, so it <laughs> took you know, about half an hour. <laughs> so there's all sorts of variety. And I, mm -hmm. I did play on a few other things that we didn't end up using, so 
Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Wow. I yeah. That's nice awesome. That. Yeah. So um, th- I- I've actually never heard any wiggle um, answer this question before, and I've always wondered this. So um, what is the process of writing like a set list for a Wiggles concert uh, like? Because you, you guys have so many amazing. songs to choose yes. from. So how do you even narrow that down? Um, I, I can't really remember too much about you know, when we were touring all the time. I guess we, we'd just, we, we'd have a, you, you always start with the ones you have to do. So you always have to do right. Lost your Bear, um, yeah. Salad. Yeah. Um, hot potato, can you probably two two chugga chugga? Yeah, uh, yeah, we did yeah. always nearly always did play guitar with Murray, as, as you said. Then there'd have to be uh, what oh, quack quack, because yeah, oh, yeah, so you'd have to have a song mm-hmm. for each of the, the characters, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so that you know, that's a few right there, and then just things would come in, you know, it's usually something that was fairly recent. We'd um, We'd probably mm-hmm. do like if we just recorded something, mm-hmm. or um, but I think with the, with um, with these OG Wiggles tours, I, I think we all just put we just sat around and made a list, a really long list, and then we just had to cut stuff out because the show would have been about three yeah. hours long. And we have done that sometimes, not three hour shows, but um, we've done it where we've sort of mis miscalculated how many songs we could do, and the show oh, yeah. you know, goes on for yeah. <laughs> nearly two hours. Mm-hmm. So we had to, yeah, yeah. We have to cut it back. So yeah, we, it's kind of with the OG tours, it's fairly set. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, but those those OG shows. Did you guys rehearse any songs that you were just like, nah, let's not do that. That didn't put it in the show. Or was there any? Was there any couple instances like that? Um, I think I think we rehearsed a whole bunch and probably didn't play some, but not because we didn't want to. Just um, you know, just with time res- restrictions, and you know, uh, it's because it, the audience is slightly different. Well, no, actually, that doesn't make. Sense. I was going to say because they're at, you know slightly different. They're adults. You might play different songs, but we didn't really because we just we pretty much just approached it like as if we were playing a show for kids and yeah. mm-hmm. just very big kids. We'd had a few drinks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's a song you wish you performed live more during your time with the Wiggles? Uh, so one that I wish we'd perform more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, nothing really jumps to mind. I mean, there's so many. It's another thing where there's so many songs. It's not like um, you have like a thousand songs to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah. uh, I can't think of one that we that I, I wish we played more. Um, the ones I love, we played a fair bit. Things sort of come and go. Um, I don't know. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> there are so many. No, okay. no worries. No worries. It would be cool to see six months of Licky Boat come back with the. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. That's yeah. That's old Australian hit. There, the, yes. there was one that I suggested to Anthony that I was really hoping would make it in. Uh, the song Uncle Noah's Ark. Yeah. Yes. Imagine, yes. Oh, ima- yeah. No, imagine the arena of adults making the animal sounds. That would just <laughs> oh, be the best. Do it. Do it. <laughs> that is. That's, that, <laughs> That would have That'd just be been awesome. fantastic. Yes. Yeah, I'll discuss it with them. Yes. There you go. There uh, you go. Sure, yes. Just mention Tyler in there too. No, don't worry. You can take credit because I have this brilliant idea. We got to do Uncle Noah's <laughs> Ark. <laughs> so, um, so now, kind of moving on from you know the Wiggles side of things. Yeah. So, like you mentioned before, of course. Currently, you are part of the band, the Soul Mover. So, um, I, uh, how did you and Lizzie kind of decide to sort of revive it? Because I know you mentioned before there was a there was a previous lineup that you know yeah. kind of yeah. disbanded, and then so, you and Lizzie yeah, kind of revived it. Yeah. Yeah. So the original the original Soul Movers, um, most probably aren't aware of them, but there's a like hugely influential band in Australia called Radio Birdman. Um, they just they only play occasionally now, yeah, but they they ran in the seventies. So um, the guitar player and sort of main guy from Radio Birdman is a guy called Dennis Tech. Uh, he's actually American. He's mm. from Detroit um, or Ann Arbor actually. But um, so he was living in Australia and um, yeah, so a long time after Radio Birdman, um, he and Lizzie were a couple, and um, he didn't know that 
what a great singer she was and heard her singing and said, man, we're going to, we're going to do something. And so they, they um, recorded an album quite hurriedly and, um, and then went and did some touring and stuff and, and played quite a bit. Uh, anyway, they, they, their relationship as a couple ended. They're still friends, of course, but, um, uh, and so the band kind of folded. Um, I'd, I'd kind of known Lizzie a little bit for, um, for a few years. I'd, you know, I'd seen her around. She's really tall. She's, we're, we're both over six foot tall. So oh, wow. if, we, if we're seeing a band or something, I'd, we'd often spot each other and just smile and nod, you know, <laughs> the tall people. Right. And um, um, <clears throat> I, I didn't know she sang either. And, and um, I just came across this album, The Soul Movers, and I looked, I looked at the cover and I thought, that's, that's, uh, that's that tall girl, Lizzie. And, um, and, and Dennis Tech from Radio Birdman. So I, I took it home and had a listen and, and I was just blown away by her, her, um, her voice. She's just, she really is great, an amazing, great, powerful great singer. singer. Oh, yeah. 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 And, um, so I, I contacted her and said, um, I, you know, I'd really like to do something to do some recording or you know, do some playing with you. And, and so we, we actually got together with some other guys and, um, some rehearsing and, uh, then I said, well, why don't we, yeah, the name was already out there, the Soul Movers, why don't we play as the Soul Movers? And, um, and, uh, and so, we, yeah, we started doing these, doing shows and um, uh, recorded um, our first um, record with that lineup. Um, at, yeah. um, ABC Music, who put out the, the Wiggle stuff in Australia, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. put it out for me. And, and um, so we've done that album. We've done two more since then. Uh, the one... Not the most recent one, but the one before, um, uh, we recorded in in the US in um, in Alabama and um, Tennessee um, at Muscle oh. Shoals, um, Alabama, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and then uh, Sun Studios in in Memphis. Uh, yeah, so we had this sort of great adventure um, re- recording with and with some great uh, some great musicians too, Spooner Oldham and uh, uh, mm-hmm. David Hood, who play on. Have played on lots of things you would you would have heard lots and lots of soul hits particularly so yeah, yeah that was a real thrill it was just yeah just great fun yeah That's awesome yeah you guys are an awesome band now yeah. quickly before we run out of time I want to quickly talk guitars with you because I'm a guitarist sure. you're a guitarist Murray if you could pick any well I guess you might have a couple but what would you say are some of your favorite guitars that you own. I know that's probably um, like choosing between your children <laughs> but it's like <laughs> hey it's fine. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I do have quite a lot of guitars. On uh, there's, I can just show you, Tyler, because oh, you'll sweet. probably appreciate. It. Um, th- this is one of my favorites. Um, oh, nice! Woo! Oh, wow! Oh, wow. Nice. Look at her! Oh, it's a. Um, Is that a gold yeah. top? Yeah, uh, it's, that awesome. it's a fifty. 1953 gold top, so that's one of my favorites. <laughs> and that's then I've got incredible. a bunch of Stratocasters. I've, I've got um, a, 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 a few 50s ones, and um, the, the oh, 64 I use quite a lot, and I've been using it on the OG. Um, yeah, I was, sure. I, was, yeah. I was gonna ask if that was a 64 Strat on the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, OG it is. shows. That is awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, the first guitar I ever saw was uh, the, the red one with the uh, the, the the red Telecaster with the stars on it. Yeah, red star. Yes. 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 I'm, I'm guessing that stuck with me because now my main is my Black Player Series Telecaster, which yeah, right yeah. on I've the strap, playing. right on the strap. I go. Oh, look at that. Oh, and then you got the other one. Oh, I'm on it, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, Henry. Oh, there's Henry. Yeah, there's there they are. That's so cool. Oh man, mm-hmm. I'm, I've been playing a telly quite a lot in the Soul Movers lately. Um, yeah, it's not even a I mean, I've had lots of vintage. I've got a few vintage ones, but uh, yeah. it's it's just a new one that I, I really like. So yeah, yeah okay. that's that awesome. Yeah. yeah, Speaking of soul movers, um, one of my favorite songs is "Circles Baby." And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Part of the Circle, oh, Circles yes. Baby music video. Oh yeah, yeah, that great song. That was great fun. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. that was that was during the. We had several lockdowns in in um, in Sydney, yeah. and we kind of put that together just after the first one, I guess. And we just wanted to do something really positive. And, and and also to connect with my you know my old audience the Wiggles audience, um, right. and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was kind of Lizzie's idea to get Greg involved to do the um, the voiceover stuff that uh, yeah, sort of, uh, uh, yeah. motivational kind of thing. And then then we asked the guys if they they the other Wiggles if they'd come and do the 
video yeah. and, and, uh, and so yeah. we filmed it go. at the Wiggles studio and so um, yeah it's cool it's really it was yeah. good fun that's uh, awesome that's, that's glad awesome. you enjoyed that one I could tell <laughs> that's great so wrapping up here what would you like to say to your fans and supporters not just of the Wiggles but of the Soul Movers as well mm-hmm. oh I guess just mostly thank you know, thank you for your support over the years it's quite overwhelming really and, and especially doing these OG Wiggles shows um you know they're, they're so much fun but we, we are quite overwhelmed by the, the, the sort of love that's there and, and yeah. uh, how much it means to people um and that kind of uh rolls over into the soul movies a bit too because i get a lot of young people like we're an older band but um we get a lot of young people coming to see us mainly out of curiosity um right uh, about yeah. what i'm up to and but um uh, it's just really lovely that, that and then they, they love the music so they stick around you know I, I, mm-hmm. I found um, a lot of young people of, like, of your generation um, aren't as stuck in um, their ideas about music as say my generation was where you know you, yeah. you love this sort of you, you know if you're a rock guy you just love rock and you know you hated what your parents liked and stuff like that but you know yeah, I, I think yeah. young people are, are really open to listening to music of different eras and absolutely. You know, different, different oh, yeah. styles. Absolutely. And I think that's really positive. And so, um, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, if, if anyone would, uh, if anyone would like to contact you, where can people find you? Find me um, on social media with um, Soul Movers Band or my own. Um, just search me. I'll come up pretty easily. To, uh, I'm on Insta. Um, mm-hmm. Cook dot Murray at, at Cook dot Murray. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Our social awesome. media and summer social media yeah. will be down below. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We're all over it. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Right, take us out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I've been given the uh, last question because I'm, I'm the guest host. But <laughs> from from my from my understanding, I think they ask this in every episode. Yeah. But um, when you th- because this is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia. What do you think of, or what does nostalgia mean to you? Uh, I guess I'm just thinking back to when I was younger and the music I listened to there, it's nearly always music for me. Um, it's you know, the main thing in my life. So, you know, I think, and I, I think music's really evocative and, and um, uh, sort of gives you that feeling of nostalgia. You remember where you were when you first heard something often and um, it takes you back. So, yeah, I just get, I guess the music of my, my teens um, is is important to me. Yeah. Thank you so, right. so, so much. Thank you so much. Thank Good. Murray. Thank you so. Thank you so much, Actually, Murray. And Murray, I just want to say thank you so much for thank you being so, a part so of much. our childhoods. I'm yes. glad for, yes. for making You're being a part of our lives. lives. Yeah. Yes, and and keep up the great work for you're doing, and yeah, we'll see what's it. next. And I hope and I can't wait this whenever you know, what's geez, next you know, for... come to us come to us come to USA. You know, thanks for this. <laughs> yes, thanks, thanks for oh, so much. Well, everyone, this brings another thanks, episode guys. of. Yes, welcome. you are welcome. You're welcome everyone, You're this welcome. brings welcome. another episode of Jake's Happiness Audio Show to a close. We've absolutely enjoyed our time talking yes. with Murray Cook. You know, again, we're all Wiggles fans, and you know, fans of the Soul Movers as well. So, you know, this is oh, thanks, honestly guys. a dream come true for all of us. So, thanks again, Murray, and yes, you are worth it. Yes, yeah, so all of our viewers and listeners, remember you are worth it. And it's always stay nostalgic. And uh, Murray, do you have any uh, last words for our audience? Just say um, it's, it was great talking to you guys. Really lovely. And, and um, thank you. Uh, thanks thank for you. everyone for the support over the years. It means yeah. a lot to us. And we love hearing um, fan stories. And especially if they, they, they love music because of the Wiggles, that means so much to us. So thanks, guys. Yeah, and keep yes. on wiggling. What a pleasure. And keep yeah. on wiggling. Yeah. Yeah, keep, yeah, on wiggling. <laughs> keep on wiggling yes. and soul moving. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. that. that. That's a, there, All there right, there guys. Yes. Yeah, so, well, right. uh, again, until next time, stay nostalgic and you are worth it. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. You're worth it. Bye. See you next time on another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember that you are worth it and to always stay nostalgic. Bye-bye.